Thank you, fearless listeners, for tuning in today, and go you for pressing play. Please like and subscribe as it helps us grow. Also, share with your friend as we have to keep talking about this shit. Now let's dive in. Coming up on today's edition of Women and Money, the shit we don't talk about, our guest is one of our own Purse Strings approved professionals, Ronica Brown. We are so glad to have Ronica with us today. Ronica is a CPA at RBA Tax Advisors. Her expertise is all things taxes, so we are thrilled to have her with us today at the Purse Strings table. So let's dive in. Gloria Steinem once said, we will never solve the feminization of power until we solve the masculinity of wealth. Barbara Provost and Maggie Nielsen are the team at Purse Strings that will help you navigate the ins and outs of financial independence so that you can be financially fearless. This is Women in Money, the shit we don't talk about. Ronica, thank you so much for joining us today. Will you please take a few minutes to introduce yourself to our listeners? Thank you, ladies, for having me today. Um, Hi, everyone. My name is Ronica Brown. I'm a CPA. But guess what? A lot of times I do not like saying that I'm a CPA because I feel like people put us in a little box. So I like to say that I am a tax expert. I'm a tax advisor. Um, I've been a CPA tax advisor for over what I'm going on like 16 years now. My first job was in tax. I have a degree in accounting and my first job was in tax. It was a bit weird for me just because I wanted to be an accountant, not a tax accountant. (laughs) So once I got my first job um, in tax, I was working at the um, Home Depot corporate tax office. And I found that I was planning to do one year in tax and then, you know, go find an auditing job at, you know, one of the accounting firms. And my mind was blown just because... The company spent all year planning for taxes. They're not doing tax returns or all of that is outsourced, but in-house, they're planning on what are the strategies to reduce taxes. And that's what I was attracted to. So, you know, after getting that experience in corporate and decided to, you know, become a business owner, that was the thing that puzzled me for a long time is, you know, how can small business owners you know, they may not have the income as a Home Depot or a large company, but how can they do get strategies in place so that they too can, you know, um, benefit from the tax code? Because, you know, as my mentor said, the tax code is just a series of incentives. So how can we direct business owners to use the tax code to their, to its maximum potential, reduce, reduce their taxes and, you know, make more money. So that's the mission that I'm on. Um, and that's why I call myself a tax advisor, just because I don't want people to get weirded out and say, oh my gosh, there's that CPA. <laughs> oh, I love it. I love it. And we're so excited to have you on today and really just dive into some of those things is how we can use some of these tax benefits to our advantage or y- use some of this code to our advantage. And as a business owner, you know, really get the most out of the money that we've earned. And so just diving right into this, um, I know we're going to talk about like three main topics today. And kind of the first one of having the best tax savings advantages is having the right business entity. Um, So can you dive into that a bit more? Right. And I think that, you know, for, you know, with working with small business and growing business over the years, I think that one of the things that they should ultimately think about, you know, how can my taxes make me money? How can I, you know, you know, save money in my business by just reducing my taxes? And I think that once people kind of like have that mindset change, then it will be a less painful process. (laughs) I'm hoping we're providing the information, making sure that you keep correct documents, making sure that you're talking to your CPA more um so as if we look at one of the first thing as a business owner is making sure that you have the right entity just because each different entities are taxed differently so one of the things that um business owners can you know kind of think about is you know your legal entity is separate from your tax entity so you can have an llc say in colorado so legally it's an llc but you can tell the irs how you want that llc to be taxed Do you want it to be taxed as an S-Corp? Do you want it to be taxed as a single member LLC? Do you want it to be taxed um, if it's multiple members of partnership? Do you want it to be taxed as a corporation? So your tax identity 
is completely different from the business that you're than what you registered with your state. Does that make any sense? Yeah, I'm um, learning this yeah. for the first time, so that's why. Right. So you know, the taxability is a, a choice, and then elections you can make. And a lot of times when you're doing your, you know, people normally just you know registering, you know, an LLC, and you know those who you know may hear of an S corp, you know, may register an S corp, but you know, how do you get the best for the type of business that you're operating? Or if you own multiple businesses, you know, are those multiple business being as tax efficient? If you're having real estate, things like that, you know, what are the best entity for each type of business? And that's one of the things that, you know, we focus on making sure that clients are maximizing, you know, their operating companies in most cases, being an S corp, paying yourself a reasonable salary maximizing the deductions as an S-Corp um, will basically be kind of like a low-hanging fruit for operating businesses. And, you know, by operating businesses, I mean, you know, a lawyer, a doctor, a CPA business, you know, a construction company, you know, things, uh, businesses like that. And then if you're owning other businesses or, or other assets, you know, what's the best kind of like tax umbrella to put those under so that you can, you know, offset losses, and just, you know, being able to deduct as much expenses without basically losing a lot of your cash because tax deduction does cost you cash. You have to spend the money a lot of times to get a tax deduction. But what we like to focus, you know, what are the deductions that basically return money to you in your pockets? Kind of like see the physical manifestation of your tax deduction. How does it return money to you rather than you're just always spending? You're always buying equipment. You're always you know, spending money in order to, you know, see a lower tax bill. Um, so one of the thing is, you know, making sure that you, you're under that correct umbrella. A lot of times your CPA, you know, can tell you how much taxes you're saving being your particular business. And if you made a different choice, how what would be the difference in taxes? So for anyone that's concerned about, you know, am I paying a lot of taxes? I think that everyone thinks they're paying a lot of taxes. But for those at least have that understanding that, you know, at this point in my business, I am maximizing all the different types of things that I can get from my income level, from my business. And I'm satisfied with that rather than just having the unknown and being able to get that comparative to say, you know, if I was an S corp, if I was a single member LLC, if I was a corporation, these are the different buckets of taxes I would be paying. Um, so I think that, you know, that type of analysis can be helpful in helping people get more clarity and even just understand just things from a tax standpoint. I swear, if they understand more, they um, they would see that, you know, hey, I, you know, this is, you know, actually, you know, benefiting me then, you know, it's just not a paperwork exercise. Definitely, definitely. And yeah, that's interesting. But you do have to kind of compare and get the best out of what you're working right, with. Right, right. Yeah, it's because yeah. that comparison, you just, you just don't know, right? You just don't know if you're actually in the lowest tax bracket if you don't have something to compare it with. And Otherwise, for, no matter how small the business is, there is always something to compare it with. Right. As I say, otherwise, it's just comparing, you know, against against the wall and you have nothing yeah. really to go after. So that makes a lot of sense, kind of comparing and making sure that you are in the best tax bracket because we don't want to be giving our money away that we don't have to be. Um, and that the IRS is not even asking you for, but you just give it to them because. <laughs> what a nice so gift that would be. Up, as business owners, the, the law, you know, the tax code helps businesses to grow and expand in America. And that's one of the awesome thing about how the tax code is designed. It can be simpler, to be honest, but it does incentivize business owners. So, you know, I think that, you know, getting the maximum, paying the lowest taxes is what the IRS wants you to do and grow your business. I love hearing that they're on our side. So I'm all about it, <laughs> all about it. And so then I know there's other ways, you know, that you could use tax-free cash or there's kind of tax-free cash and there's different ways you can get some benefits. I know one of them you even mentioned was a home office as here we are recording in a home office. Um, right. So what are some of these other opportunities for tax-free cash? Right. So um, when we look at tax-free cash, um, what we mean by that are what are the deductions you know, that a business can get just by pulling cash from the business? So this is income that's not going to get taxed. 
And this is income that, you know, you don't have to spend any additional money to get. Um, you already maintain a home, for example. So that's money that you're already spending in your personal life. So normally for each business, you know, there may be, a, you know, a set of these deductions that they can get this tax-free cash um, from. So as you mentioned, you know, home office, even if you have a business location elsewhere, you you know, there is a part of the code that allows for administrative home office. As long as you do administrative things at home, whether it's coming up with your to-do list for the next day or whatever administrative you you do, you can also, you know, qualify. Um, one of the issues that we see with the home office is people are not maximizing. And I think, you know, maybe because, you know, they may not get a the, um, direction in what information they should provide. We normally give our clients like a checklist that includes, you know, your mortgage interest, your property taxes, repairs. It's like when you own homes, like it becomes a labor of love, right? You're always, oh yeah, oh yeah, you're always doing things to update repairs, utilities, you know, just those expenses around the home that that people don't normally, you know, keep track of. That you know, so we find that the checklist kind of like give them a guide in basically compiling that information that will help them. And you know, it may not be significant for most people. They average about six thousand dollars in a tax deduction for a home office, but that's actually a check that you can write to yourself if you are like an S corp and that money is just completely not not taxed. So when we look at you know these different categories. They have one that the um, deduction that they call the, um, if you look online, it's more so referred to as what they call an Augusta loophole. That's what the okay. online people refer to it as. But this is where you can, basically your business, if you're operating a business as, you know, say an S corp or a corporation or a partnership, and this is where your entity matters because certain, certain entity can get certain deduction and others cannot. So, for example, if you're an S corp, you can rent your 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 S corp can rent your home to have business meetings, board meetings. Being an you know you at least have to have one um, business meeting, or I don't know if you remember what the term is called. It's kind of like um, board meetings or something each year. So you can actually pay yourself to have those meetings where you do your minutes and just keep your corporate books um, from a legal standpoint updated. But, you know, if people look it up, they'll call it like an Augusta rental. And that money, you know, it's it's not tax at all. Because if you rent, if anyone rents your home for less than 14 days, that's income by law is not taxed. So if your business is a person that's renting it and you pass the money from your business to you personally, then that basically falls within that under 14 days. Um, so most clients do it for, you know, one meeting per month. We have a ton of management meetings. We shut down office sometimes just to do planning <laughs> meetings. Um, so in December, we'll have a ton of those meetings. So just by planning for the upcoming year ahead that we're able to meet it. And, you know, for, for me, for example, I just like, you know, you know, I come up with my market comps and I just transfer that money to my personal account for my business each month. And that's just money that is completely just not taxed. So you'll be surprised that, you know, normally you have to come up with some comparables. Some people can rent their home for a thousand dollars a day. Some people for I've seen people renting, they're able to find comps for two, three thousand, ten thousand dollars per day. Wow. So it's yeah. based on your location, the size of your house that you do have to come up with the comparables to make sure it's a fair rent. But um, you'll be surprised how much it costs to rent out an entire space like the size of your house. That is some huge money saving opportunity right there. I mean, just to take advantage of because why not? I mean, if you have that right. opportunity, we might as well. It's not like you actually have to have everyone hosted at your house. Exactly. So, yeah. You don't have to bring anyone to your house either. <laughs> like, Sounds perfect. You know, you, right. If you're a solar business, you can have this meeting um, by yourself. As I said, that every LLC, at least by state law, does require to at least have one officer meeting I'm, i don't remember what the lawyers call it but they have to have one of those meetings each year to keep their corporate books so at least that meeting that you're able to pay yourself for and keep in compliance with your your llc registration you know in your state so i think that you know with small business owners is understanding you know what are these buckets of tax-free cash that i can get from my business 
Right, right. Um, is it going to be, you know, your home? Is it going to be this Augusta thing, you know, once you Google it? Is it going to be some kind of medical reimbursement plan? Are you having a lot of out-of-pocket medical expenses? How can you make those fully deducted under your business? Not only the premiums for the health insurance, but what about a lot of the out-of-pocket expenses? A lot of people will put those on what we call an itemized deduction. Mm-hmm. But there's so much limitations to that that you don't get the full amount. So how can you get the full amount under your business if you're able to do some kind of medical reimbursement plan? Um, do you have children? Can you hire them? Oh, you know, What are the things that you can hire your children to do in your business? Can they clean your office and you pay them and they can use the money for their hobbies? Can they, are they involved in marketing in your business? There are people who post their baby pictures online and they're like branding little onesies and things like that. Like all of that counts as, you know, as valid um, tax deduction. Um, The key to everything in the tax world is documentation. Documentation to show that you're doing it for real. I think we can definitely conclude here that um, having a professional to know these tips and to ask you these questions to help you keep track of this is so important because there are all these different little nuances that we don't always hear about or don't always think will add up. But, um, you know, every little bit really does come together, especially when you're a small business owner. So it does seem like, you know, professional is very helpful for all these things um, because sometimes you just don't know what you don't know. Exactly. And I think that, you know, just to always work with someone that you feel comfortable to ask questions even if you feel like um i think that business owners sometimes put the pressure on themselves that you know this may be a stupid question or you know they don't want to you know bother their accountants or their accountant may not be responsive or something like that so if they're not responsive then maybe you need to find someone new but uh, making sure that you're working in a space where you can ask questions regardless of how silly it is because the thing that you know, as CPAs, we can only save you money if we advise you ahead of time. A lot, mm-hmm. when, it, when it's time for the tax return to be filed, that's what we call compliance. All we have to do is try to make sure that things are compliant because a lot of times that you're, you don't have much wiggle room in getting things done. So things like right now in 2022, the year is about to close. If, if anyone that's concerned about taxes, you know, doing a year in review, you know, asking about, you know, deductions, what else can I maximize? Just, you know, things like that to just start a conversation that you don't have to know everything, but just trying to have those financial checkpoints ahead of time, I think would be worthwhile. And then, you know, you may learn, you know, way more and, you know, save more taxes rather than just, you know, hiding from the entire process and just, you know, showing up to do your tax return just because those people tend to just pay more in taxes just because, you know, there's not much that can be done during tax preparation because we're only being compliant at that point. So, Ronica, I'm so glad you made that point because that's exactly why we are talking about taxes, even though it's October. Right. Because we want people to say, hey, you can um, start doing some things now to look at your, like you said, year end review, to look at your expenses, to see what you've been tracking, gather some receipts, whatever documentation, like you said, that you may need so that you're ahead of the game and you're in preparation for doing your taxes. So I know it sounds crazy that we're talking about taxes all month in October, but this is especially why we're doing it is to be prepared. Exactly. And those are the people who save more 50% or more because we're right now, you know, yesterday was a tax deadline and we're heading into year end is the busiest time. We're heading into the year end planning, um, you know, look at, you know, some of the things that we discuss and more, um, you know, they're for people who have higher tax liability, they're, you know, tax transaction that they can participate in. They can buy solar, like everyone loves solar, right? <laughs> um, Clean energy, you know, with those initiatives, there's just a lot more funding going towards renewable energy and things like that. So there there are a lot of incentives, but being proactive, that's how you get it. You can't get it when it's time to file a tax return. And I think that's the hardest for people is being proactive. And that's why we are here. Exactly. So once they start and you're on that track and, you know, someone can look over your, you know, your tax plan or your tax 
for the entire year and then you have that next check-in so i think in the initial year that your start just may be a bit tougher just because you're not used to that process but once you get into that rhythm then it will it'll be a lot easier because you'll have more touch point um the, your accountant will have you know way more knowledge about your business and what you're looking for because i think that can i make this point yeah please <laughs> can I say this? I think one of the big misconceptions is that people think when they hire an accountant or a CPA, just hiring that person saves them money. Like, I'm not sure where people get that from. Like, but your accountant can only do as much as you do or you provide them. They they can, you know, get magical deductions and so forth. So if you don't have the information, if you don't have those meetings and have those conversations, they don't know what's going on and how to help you to say, do this differently, put this on their separate business, do this this way. So you're basically your own tax savior, if you think about it. We're just directing it. I love so, that point. I love that right, point. Right. So without having those conversations, we can't really do anything. So people think that just hiring the accountant is what gets the job done, but no, like, most CPAs, all they're doing is trying to be compliant. Yeah, that makes a lot of sense. It's like going to the doctor and just hoping that you're healthy. Um, it just doesn't exactly. work like that. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So don't lie to the doctors. So you gotta sure tell them where you're know. hurting. Yeah. Don't tell them where you're hurting. Exactly. That's a great point. So it's the same approach that, you know, you go to your doctor, you get your health scan, and you have to tell your doctor what has been going on with you. Yeah, that's a great point to bring up because yeah, just hiring the professional does not just magically you don't just have a different wand and right and they say, you know they just figure figure it out. So it's like you know we have to know what's going on. We have to know what you're planning for. We have to know those things so that we can help you to change the facts around them for you to get into a better tax position. And that's that's what our job is. And you know, but we have to get information for, from you. So you are your own. Um, tax saver, actually, if you think about it. Awesome. That's a great point. I'm really glad, glad you brought that up today. Um, I know there was one more thing that we wanted to touch on, which is kind of new or different, you know, of course, because of COVID, and that's the retention tax credit. Um, and so can you kind of just give us a quick explanation of, of what that is for business owners? Right. So the employee retention credit, um, this credit as was actually around way longer than the you know pandemic but of course just a oh, limited, really right so just only a limited number of business would, would qualify just based on the qualification before so during the pandemic they changed the qualification so that you know people that were that they thought suffered economic loss or were impacted by the shutdown that happened um gosh it seems so long ago um in 2020 that they were able to get this incentive as well. So basically they changed the rules so that, you know, people that were affected by the pandemic, you know, business owners were able to claim this um, credit. So the credit goes to retaining, you know, employees. So, you know, you have to have people that are on payroll, basically yourself and, you know, other, you know, people that works in your business would have to be, you know, going through payroll, getting them a W-2 and things like that in order to, to qualify. Um, but what we've, seeing that most clients were able to qualify during that initial shutdown period um, when everyone stayed at home for like a month or, you know, a couple of weeks that, you know, that quarter for most people will qualify. So I think that, you know, instead of like going and do a Google check of, you know, these are the rules yourself and making your own assessment, just get an assessment from someone who actually provide the service of doing the credit is completely free of cost mm -hmm. for everyone. Um, for example, at our firm, we didn't do the credit in house just because it was, it was a madhouse, it was tax season and it, it would have been too much work for us to do it in house. So in, in order for our clients to get the benefit, because we didn't want them to miss out on the benefit, you know, we, you know, found someone that, you know, we thought was, you know, pretty competent and did a good, great job and basically have the clients work with them just to get that piece done. So even if their, you know, CPA providers, you know, don't specifically provide it, I think that, you know, everyone that has, you know, a payroll, you know, during 2020, 2021, um, that there's still opportunities for them to go ahead and file for the retention tax credit for that period of time. And, you know, most providers who 
provide this retention tax credit service. They don't really charge a fee for review. Um, they normally charge a fee once they're able to qualify you for the credit. So it, it's basically a win-win scenario just to get an um, assess. I guess you're not losing anything, not win-win. <laughs> Uh, right. You're not losing anything to just get an assessment that you'll just be able to, you know, know whether you qualify or not. Or, you know, for some people, you know, they're able to just get, you know, that credit. And, you know, the IRS have been issuing these checks. So a lot of people have been very happy that they at least qualify, even if you qualify for one quarter, I think is worth to um, take a look at. Sounds great. I am so glad that you touched on that because there have been some questions around the retention tax credit. So that was really helpful information. Actually, all of this has been really enlightening. Um, The whole idea of prepping now for your taxes so you have things in order. Um, I think the hardest thing around tax time is people feel frustrated with all the paperwork and things they need to gather and they're all numbered and you know nothing has a name they're all going by a different number which is very confusing if you're not familiar with them Um, i know what i do is i just as tax documents come in there's a folder my husband and i just keep putting them in a folder until we think we have them all And then uh, we fill out a a document from our accountant. So we kind of do have a routine. Um, But, you know, I think preparation is key with taxes. You've given us some great insights, especially with everyone working from home now. I mean, I can't imagine home office benefits and cars and all of those things that we're now using for our, you know, our businesses, our practices are a great deduction that we may be overlooking. So great, great tips. Right. And I think that, you know, one thing that we have also observed that, you know, people think they're taking the deduction and you're not sometimes like sometimes they feel because they were like, you know, you know, my accountant should have figured it out. But, you know, if they didn't, you know, it's not some of these things you you don't get it because accountants, we go by financial transaction mm-hmm. for S Corp. You, you have to reimburse yourself for, for your home office. That's just how it works under under um, an S corporation, it, the money has to come out in some form of like reimbursement or some form of payment to yourself. Mm-hmm. So a lot of times if you're sometimes not doing that part, you have to understand if you're actually taking an deduction, are they adjusting something else in the return to reflect that? So I think that, you know, just trying to ask those questions, don't assume that you're getting certain things, ask the questions will help you to, you know, know if you're actually getting them. Yes, another great point. There's no magic wand (laughs) that your accountant waves over your taxes (laughs) to get you deductions. (laughs) You have to really give them the information. So uh, great, great point. Yes, I would know that, you know, tax time can be very annoying. You know, if you think about it, we have to follow our taxes as well. So we do feel some of that pain gathering our information and things like that. So if there's anything that, you know, us CPAs can do to make it easier, then, you know, we're welcome to all those ideas as well. But we do also, you know, realize that it's it's just, you know, a very um, unsexy process. (laughs) It is, but it's got to get done. So you might as well ask some of these questions and get a couple grand back if you can. I mean... Exactly, well. exactly. It, it's unsexy, but it helps with, you know, especially if you're trying to grow your, your, your network, you're trying to grow your business, then, you know, saving money on taxes, whether it's 10,000, 50, 100k a year will go a long way, you'll get that money to reinvest in your business, go take a nice vacation or do whatever the hell you want to do with your money. <laughs> I love it. I love it. We've covered so much great information today. Are there any other parting thoughts or anything else that we missed that you want to make sure uh, our our audience hears before we sign off? Yes, I think that, you know, you know, we can, you know, talk about deductions and so forth. But I think that, you know, stop being afraid of taxes. There's really nothing to be afraid of. It's a it's it's all about incentives. Um So I hope that, you know, people at least, you know, have a little mindset change. Yes, it's a lot of paperwork and we hate that the IRS already have that paperwork. So why the heck do you need to send it back to them? (laughs) So we hope, especially on a personal level, that, you know, they will do something, implement some technology, use some of this money that this administration is giving them towards technology to make that part of the tax easier 
So we know that it needs to be easier, but, you know, just from a mindset standpoint, you know, be a little more open-minded about it, have more conversations around it. And then, you know, hopefully that will make, you know, you get more comfort, people get more comfortable to ask questions. Cause I think that that's one of the big thing that, you know, sometimes you can give a client the deductions on a platter, but they already have so much mindset block on, you know, what's it going to cost me this and that, or they may have, I think it's called money mindset that people mm-hmm. have like certain mindset about money. So it carries over in business and also how they think about taxes that they can't see that it's benefiting them, even when you're like giving it to them. So I think that a lot of what holds, you know, business owners back is that, you know, thinking about it from like, a, you know, I should be saving money and, you know, show me what I'm saving mindset would be, you know, helpful that they're not losing out on things just because they just don't want to think about it in their mind. Yeah, that's excellent that um, we need to play our own important part in the tax uh, savings calculation. Uh, We need to really evaluate, make changes, put documentation together, and take an active step to ensure that we're doing our fair share to ensure we are getting the deductions that we deserve back as well. And not just to say, oh, I'm not quite sure, I don't want to ask the question, or I'll just let my accountant take care of it. That's not going to happen. That's not going to happen for you. You really have to be take an active role and do your fair share in order to partner with your accountant, your CPA, um, right. your tax advisor, and really work in partnership with them so that together you are getting the best deductions as well. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, this has been so much great information. So thank you again, Ronica, for coming on today. Um, Ronica, like we said, is one of our Purse Strings approved professionals. So you could reach out to her off our site, purstrings.co. And we will be back here again pretty soon. So hope you tune in, share with a friend and call up a tax advisor, you know, get started today. So thank you for tuning in. Bye. Thank you. Bye bye. information is for illustrative purposes only and does not constitute tax, investment, or legal advice. Always consult with a qualified investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.